two days ago I auditioned for the X Factor. Now, I don't don't get me wrong, alright? I don't think I can sing, alright? Um but I don't know. I had some kind of like brainwave. I thought, aha, if I can get in front of Simon Cowell and explain to him what it is I'm doing, um I may be able to appeal to his human nature. Of course, looking back on it with hindsight, um, I didn't realise how difficult it was going to be to get to Simon Cowell. <laughs> what a weekend I have had. It has been the best time that I have had in absolutely years. We've met oodles of lovely new friends and had an absolute hoot and public humiliation aside you know I'd recommend it to anybody but obviously it's I'm still in my infancy in in trying to explain what I do um I did make myself look a bit of a brat <laughs> yeah. not least because the woman who was asking me about it was incredibly rude and how they expected anybody to sing well. Like, literally, they got four hours of TV work out of everybody. There were, like, 20,000 people there or something, 10,000 auditioning, 10,000 standing with them. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice is going. And they had us for hours. Like, we went um, the day before and camped out because I thought, because I've got multiple sclerosis, um, I really wasn't up for standing in a huge queue of people. So we actually turned up there first and we got our pink tent with white fluffy bits on it and everything. So if you see a white, fluff, white fluffed pink tent on um, the X Factor and people going, Ha! Conspiracy theories! Not a point of the fool! Then you'll know that's me. Um, yeah, so like they woke us up at like stupid o'clock in the morning like five o'clock or something and i'd only got bed about 12 um and it, it, there were thousands of people there then and um and like literally it was like out of bed interview straight away and then screaming and they made us um we had to do like all the links domo o'leary was there and um we had to do all the links bit silent cheering Flex that X. Shit loads of that. I tell you, when I got up yesterday morning, I was in agony. But it was like, I mean, it was so much fun. But I, know I came away, my hand was all swollen up and I got bruises where, like, because I've got rings on and I was clapping so much, you know, getting in the swing of things. Um, so we clapped and we screamed for hours. So this started at eight o'clock in the morning and we weren't auditioned. Nobody was auditioned until one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and I can't see the logic of making people scream in freezing cold weather for four hours and then asking them to sing a song and do it well. It's so like there were there were two young girls with us, like because we made friends with people because we were there first, and then another girl, Kizzy, turned up a couple of hours after us, and we, we um, made friends. And, she and um, they laughed at her. They laughed in her face. <laughs> she sang her song. And they went, <laughs> no, or some such, or no, <laughs> or something like that. Now, this young girl came out of her audition absolutely devastated. Her world was torn apart. Um, another girl um, that was with us now, she got a lovely voice too. Um, and they said no to her as well, and she was devastated as well. And... Obviously, they, they said no to me. There was another chap with us, James, who'd got an absolutely amazing voice. He didn't get through. But one person that we'd, know, we'd seen on the night before did get through. Now, the people around about had called him, had lovingly nicknamed him Werewolf Man. Right. Now, he... they The name had stuck because he walked around the car park all night going, Oh... Oh, well, that's all you could hear. I don't know what noises he was actually making, but all you could hear was ooh, ooh, as he's walking around the car park. Now, he got through, right? And they have obviously, in my opinion, I mean, I didn't hear him, like, sing properly, 
right? But from the sort of chanting that had been done all night, I should imagine that they haven't put him through because they think he can win it, right? Now, he came up to me in the morning because the woman had interviewed me and made me sing for um, the camera and basically, why do you think you could save the world then? And what's this going to do with Sam and Carol and all this lot? Um, and then she'd gone down <clears throat> and she'd interviewed him. Bear in mind, it was still dark at this point. So I have no idea what I said because I like literally he stuck the camera in the tent like when I was still asleep. Um, so they'd interviewed this chap and made him sing. And he came over to me later on. It's the only time I spoke to him the whole time I was there. Um, he came over and he was like, oh, can I ask you how you got on when they filmed you? Um, and I'm, he's like, because I'm really worried, right? And this is genuine. He was saying this to me genuinely. He was like, I'm really worried, you know, because it's early in the morning and I'm, I'm scared my voice ain't right. And I'm, I'm really scared that, that like people are going to laugh at me and take the piss. Right, so this man is genuinely worried he that people are going to take the piss out of him. Now, they've put him through, right, and their intention with doing so, because what happens for anybody who doesn't know, you don't go in and sing for Simon Cowell, right? You've got to go in, queue for hours, scream for hours, sing in a little handmade booth thing, um, a verse of a song, your first verse of a song, and then um, you're either out or in. Um, obviously most are going to be out because of numbers. Um, and when they put somebody through who, you see, there were, there were, there, there were kids there and grown-ups there who had better voices than, than I'd heard this man sing with. Um, so it, it, it became apparent to me that they'd not put him through because he was a good singer and he, w he was quite a shy looking chap, you know what I mean, like I say, he spent most of the time on his own. And my, in my opinion, they've put him through to ridicule him. Now he's gone through one audition already and he's gone through and beat people who next to him can sing really well. Um, and he's got to go through another audition as well. Um, on Tuesday and if he gets through that one then he'll have to go to another audition and that's where he'll meet the judges. Now he'll have gone through two auditions then that have made him come away feeling like he can sing, like he is better than other people and that's not what they've picked him for, they've picked him to make an example of him and it was, you know, because he, when he looked me in the eyes and he, he was like, I'm really scared about people laughing at me. You know, he went there with genuine intentions. He wants to sing. And they are, it, to me, it's tantamount to badger baiting. It's disgusting the way they treat people. Do you know what I mean? I walked out of there because I was really chipper when I came out. I was like, yeah, you know what I mean? That's cool. I get to go home now. whip de do. I never expected to get through in the bloody first place. Um, but... You know, it, it so it didn't bother me. I just thought, yeah, great. You know what I mean? I've I've learnt so much. But you walk out of the go home your crap door, um, which is the just the door out of the. It was Birmingham City Football Club. Um, and if you if you got through, you got sent up the stairs to the Jasper Carrot Suite. Um, and if not, you just went out the back doors, out round the back. And I walked out round the back. And there were little kids stood there everywhere, sobbing their hearts out. Absolute devastation. It was, we'd got there at two o'clock. We had to sit outside on the street because the gates weren't open till five. So we had to sit outside on our own until Kizzy and Chris turned up. But still just two sets of people just sat there on the street. Now, that was really lucky because... There were people coming down the road, winding their windows down and going like, oh, you're here for the X Factor, good luck, you know what I mean? And being really, really nice. Even though we're told we hate each other. You know, these people were being lovely in the centre of Birmingham. Who knew?